Hello there everybody, Movie Man back again with another video and today I'm just going to go through everything I watched in the month of August 2024. Some of these are on Blu-ray, some of them at cinema, some of them are on stream and do these videos quite often now, I think most of you know the drift. So I've been carrying on my Alien watches and last month I think I spoke about Aliens and Alien 3. So I carried it on with the first movie of the month and that was with Alien Resurrection. Just put it over there so you can see the movie poster, guys. Uh, this is a movie that I've never really connected with all that much. I was dying to see it as a kid and when I got to it, it was quite disappointing. And over the years, it's just never really grabbed with me at all. Uh, but this time I watched it, I had a lot more fun with it. And I think it's finally connected with me. This is a film that just wears its heart on its sleeve. It just tries to have fun. It knows it's not as good as the first or the second movie. And it just tries to have a fun alien vibe with it. And I think it succeeds. And after some good characters in here, you know, uh, Winona Ryder, uh, Ron Perlman, you know, there's a good little cast in there of these, like, sort of this crew who come to this sort of ship space station and when they are there these aliens sort of break out and sort of try and come after all the characters and we've got Sigourney Weaver on there who has been cloned 200 years into the future this is now and she's a bit of a strange character in this one she's not the Ripley you know and love it's a different version of her and I was quite mixed on how I felt about that character overall there's some good action in here as one of the best alien set pieces in any of the alien films with the swimming section where the xenomorphs are chasing them through the swimming section and it's like a big setup because when they get there there's just full of alien eggs at the other end and the xenomorphs have sort of set them up absolutely love that scene you know definitely the best part of this movie anyway uh, but yeah it's it's got a, a, a bit of a dull ending i mean i don't like the ending and it it's the design of this thing that they go for, like this human hybrid type deal with the Xenomorph. It just looks stupid with its little puppy dog eyes and stuff. And we're meant to kind of feel sorry for it. Just did not work for me the last 20 minutes. But oh, everything before that is fine. It's got that 90s vibe going for it, which I've grown to appreciate over the years. You know, the look of these 90s action slash horror movies. But yeah, Alien Resurrection wasn't bad. Definitely enjoyed it a lot more this time. So that is Alien Resurrection. Next up, we have Champions. Now, sorry if there's any glare on these Blu-rays, guys. I do apologise. Uh, I watched this at the cinema last year, and I laughed my friggin' ass off. And um, when I told my wife about the movie, she actually wanted to watch it. She went, oh, that sounds good. And you, if you said it's funny, I'll watch it. And she had a great time with it as well. So, yeah, the second time of watching this, I had just as much fun with it as I did the first, so, the first time I watched it. Now, this is about Woody Harrelson, who is basically, he's this assistant coach in, in, um, in basketball and he's like a professional coach and he is drink driving and he crashes into somebody and he has to do 90 days community service and that community service involves looking after these kids with disabilities basically and they are a basketball team and he's been sent there to coach them and he goes oh it's 90 days i'll just do it whatever and then i'll be back into me system coach job in the professional basketball league but he really does grow a bond with these kids. They sort of warm to him. He warms to them. And, you know, it's just a really fun ride with the interactions of Woody Harrelson and these kids. I mean, man, there's so many funny one-liners in here. The kids, I mean, as a viewer, you grow to love them as well. And it's just a really heartwarming movie with lots of great comedy in there and there's a little romance side in there as well that i was really rooting for with woody harrelson and one of the kids sister who he's dating uh really i like that side of it but yeah i thought this was a great film really like woody harrelson as an actor to be honest and uh, this was one of my favorite movies of last year and definitely the funniest film i seen last year so definitely worth checking out if you haven't seen this guys uh it, it's a great comedy that I don't think we get too many funny comedies these days, to be honest, but this one had me belly aching. Uh, it was just hilarious. So I definitely recommend Champions if you want a good comedy. So that is Champions. Next up, we have a 2024 film called The Mousetrap. Yes, yeah, so we're going to get a whole flurry of these now. We've got Bambi coming out. We've got a Peter Pan movie coming out. We've already had Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. And I know this is detached from that kind of monster verse that they're going for there. But 
and this is the worst one. I mean, if I didn't mind Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey. I know a lot of people hated that film. And if you didn't like it, you are going to loathe this movie because I kind of liked Winnie the Pooh, Blood and Honey to an extent, but this is just not good. I mean, this is a terrible film. Apart from the visual style, it just has nothing going for it really the characters weren't too bad i mean i thought the characters were going to be shocking in this film but no they were tolerable and while i would say i wouldn't want to switch this off at any minute it was a watchable movie it was only 18 minutes long so maybe that helped there's just a ton of things going wrong for it first of all this whole steamboat willy thing has come into the public domain so these people have just jumped on it and this movie has nothing to do with Steamboat Willie whatsoever. I mean, a character is watching Steamboat Willie at one point in the movie, and that's it. That's all we get. That is the only connection to it. And then this character walks around in one of the most basic Mickey Mouse-looking costumes I've ever seen and goes around killing these characters in the arcade. And every kill is off-screen. There is nothing, really, for slasher fans to find any creative kills in there or anything like that and this mickey mouse character can teleport from one place to another don't know where they got that idea from it was just a really bad movie it's unbelievably not my worst movie of the year that is still the exorcism but man it this just isn't good it's it's just the biggest cash grab you've ever seen and i know these filmmakers I've probably done this for a very low budget, but I don't really have any qualms about calling them out for it because they have jumped on something just to make a quick book. Because I don't feel like there was any effort here. I'm not sure these people are even slasher fans and the mousetrap or Mickey's mousetrap as it was originally meant to be called. It's just a, a, a really bad film. So yeah, not worth checking out guys, unfortunately. That is the mousetrap. Carry on my Alien franchise watch series with Prometheus. Now, this is a movie that I did not like the first time I watched it. I think it's because I was getting into... I thought I was going into an Alien film, the way they marketed it and stuff. The Whalen Court was in there. It had really Scott's name over it. It was going to be in the Alien universe. And I went to cinema expecting an Alien film. I didn't get that. But over the years, time has passed. Time is a healer. I rewatched this because I was watching them all and I've reviewed them all on my horror channel, guys. I'll leave my alien review playlist down below if you want to go and check out the horror channel where I've reviewed all these movies, including the new one. But this one really worked for me a second time. I thought this was a really cool sci-fi adventure slash horror film where Ridley Scott really does expand the lore and the world of Alien in such a unique way. I, in fact, it's that different that I was impressed this time that he actually managed to connect it to that world because it is such a different story. These sort of people who are trying to investigate the beginning of life, how mankind started, go into this planet light years away and try and find out the answers. And it's really interesting but as the movie goes on, especially the third act, things start to go down the horror route and loads of batshit, insane, crazy stuff happens. And I was all for it. Uh, great cast in there, Idris Elba, Charlize Theron, uh, Numi Rapace, who's a great character in this, as Dr. Elizabeth Shaw, who's someone you really do latch on to. Um, I was really wanting them to get the answers to the start, the, to the, the beginning of mankind here. It kind of felt real, It kind of because we haven't got that answer in real life, and I kind of wanted to latch onto these people who were going to go and find it. I know it wasn't real, but it does get you that invested. Visually stunning film. This is only on Blu-ray. I can't imagine how good the 4K looks, but I was blown away by how this looked on my OLED TV, and it was just a Blu-ray. So one of the best-looking films I've ever watched on that TV, to be honest. Absolutely stunning visually. But yeah. Really great movie, definitely grew on me this time. I love when you watch a film that you didn't like and you see it in a whole new light and that was definitely the case with Prometheus, so that is Prometheus. Next up we have M. Night Shyamalan's new movie, Trap, starring Joss Hartnett. And I'm always going to be there for an M. Night Shyamalan film, especially when it's a thriller slash horror movie. And this sees Josh Hartnett go to a concert with his daughter and he realises that he's been set up because this is a trap to catch a serial killer, and Josh Harnett is that serial killer. Although the police and the FBI that are not letting anyone out of the building don't know it's him, 
they're sort of checking everyone who leaves and Josh Hart has got to find his way out of this sort of arena and not be caught basically and yeah for the first hour of this movie I was really enjoying it you know it was Josh Hartner just trying to find a way to escape looking at all the exits you know eyeing up his moves looking at all the CCTV and trying to get as much information as he can to get out of this building without being detected I just thought it was fun there was a few moments where I was like oh would that really happen you know you've got to suspend your disbelief a little bit but then the third act happens and you have got to suspend your disbelief in such a big ask of a way. Like M. Night Shyamalan has written this movie without thinking the viewer has any brain cells whatsoever. And that suspension of disbelief snapped for me in this third act. It was no longer suspended, suspended it collapsed because I just couldn't take it serious anymore. There were things happening when I was like, this would not happen. I know it's only a movie, but man it just really not pissed me off but i was just like really i mean come on things happen that just wouldn't happen in real life and i couldn't take it serious anymore so yeah not a bad movie for the first hour nothing great or anything but an exciting enough film but it just falls off a cliff in the third act unfortunately so for me trap was a bit of a disappointment, I gotta say, but still a watchable film. I do recommend it if you like Shyamalan. Just go into it knowing that you can't take everything serious or this movie will not work for you whatsoever. So that is Trap. Next up, I watched Mute Witness on 4K. This was kindly sent to me by my friend Tom, Tom180, because he won it in a competition, but he is not a 4K Blu-ray player owner and he doesn't plan to upgrade, so... Uh, thank you so much, Tom. I know I thanked you in my pickup video, but really do appreciate it, mate. Yeah, this wasn't a bad little 90s thriller. Uh, it's about this mute woman who witnesses a murder on a movie set, and these characters are trying to make a snuff movie, and she can't really tell anyone about it, but you know, she tries her best to do that. And these people see her, you know, who see her that she's a witness and go after her. And it all starts to come on top when the Mafia get involved and everything. Because there's a little bit of a business thing going on there. Yeah, I thought this was quite good. Um, good little 90-minute paced movie, like the 90s used to give us all the time. Uh, some little bloody moments in there and stuff. I thought it was... A, I, I enjoyed it. The end was a little bit... Mm, but for the rest of the movie, it was just a good thriller. And, you know, you really did fear for this woman. Because you do latch onto her a little bit and just so many people that are after her um and she is innocent of course and these people are bad people but yeah um not bad i i quite enjoyed it and uh we'll definitely watch it again so thank you so much tom really appreciate it mate that is mute witness next up i watched alien covenant now this is a film that i disliked even more than prometheus when i first seen it i just went into this film thinking they were just going to do a whole new alien thing and it was carrying on with prometheus see michael fassbender in there as david and stuff and i was like oh not this bullshit again so yeah i was quite disappointed with it now there is a lot more alien action in this movie but um for the most part it's still ridley scott trying to continue that story however i did enjoy this on rewatch a lot more than the first time probably because i enjoyed prometheus a lot more and i could see the connective tissue there and um yeah it was interesting it feels like a very middle chapter of a trilogy though because Ridley Scott was meant to do this as a trilogy and it just feels like there's something missing with this film but there were some good violent moments in there like the, the, the violent action the violent horror where the aliens jumping out of people's spines and stuff instead of the chest and you know just lots of xenomorph action really that really goes for it but for me this time, the more interesting part of this movie was Michael Fassbender's character as David. And there's an, he's playing another character in here called Walter, I believe. You know, they are both androids. And he is by far the best thing about this film. He is such a wonderful actor in these movies. And he is one of the most interesting characters. And this movie leaves on a massive cliffhanger where David is going somewhere that is going to sort of spell trouble, really. And the movie... <sighs> 
it tries to throw a twist in there about 20 minutes to go and i seen it coming in the cinema and i seen it coming this time even more because ridley scott basically puts it in front of your face and it just left me on a sour note because i was like is that meant to be the big twist i seen it coming a mile off but overall i did enjoy it a lot more this time another movie i can appreciate more on a rewatch i didn't like it as much as prometheus it's probably my least favorite alien movie but i still liked it, it just shows how strong that franchise is that is alien covenant next up i watched alien versus predator and i'm just gonna say i watched alien versus predator requiem as well uh yeah i'll just move this over here guys i'll probably put a little double poster up there or whatever alien versus predator for me was a very silly film it was an okay little concept but um it got sillier as the movie went on and paul ws anderson really felt like he directed this film it felt like one of his movies oh yeah he did direct it <laughs> uh it's basically um a hunting ground that the predators have on earth and when these xenomorphs are there the predators come down hunt them to show that they are mature predators and they're ready for adult predatorhood <laughs> and these humans get caught in the mix because they just so happen to go and visit this thing while this fight's going on, which only happens every hundred years. But there's some thing, there was some good little fight scenes in here with the xenomorphs and the predators and stuff. But it just felt too silly for me. The costumes felt like men in rubber suits, the worst the predators have ever looked. And at one moment, a predator teams up with a human to fend off the xenomorphs and i thought okay i've checked out now this is ridiculous so yeah wasn't the best film but i did have a bit of fun with it, it you know it's fine it was fine it's watchable however Pre alien vs predators of requiem i enjoyed a little bit more loads of people were leading me to believe that this was the worst movie ever made and i had a lot more fun with this one well not, i wouldn't say a lot more fun i had more fun with it uh, I think the R rating just helps it more, or the 18 rating. There's a lot more blood and violence in there. There's some sinister moments. You know, it really does go for it. I mean, even kids and stuff are killed in this movie. I'm not saying that's a good thing, but I'm just saying that the movie goes for it. It doesn't care. Um, It all takes place in, like, a <laughs> Colorado town, I believe. The human characters are weak. I mean, there's no one to root for here, really. And I haven't seen any of these actors go on to better things, and you can see why. They're just very forgettable actors and characters. Uh, very bleak ending as well. I mean, it, it's a hopeless movie. You know, there's no hope for these characters or anything. But I did like it. I just like the thought of one predator coming down who's pissed off and wants to take out all the xenomorphs that are inhabiting there to hide in the sewers and stuff like that. Yeah, it was fine. There is some bad lighting in this movie, though, I've got to say. I hear that was a big problem going in. And yes, there are some moments in this film where you can't really see a damn thing. But overall, I enjoyed it more than the first one. So that is Alien vs. Predator and Alien vs. Predator Requiem. Next up, a first time watch for me, and that was Jaws 2. Yeah, I got this in a little bit of a 4K sale in HMV. And I really enjoyed it, yeah. I mean, I, I, I've never really wanted to watch Jaws 2, 3 or 4. Because I've heard so many bad things about them, but it was only till recently where Keith from Your Euphoria Pictures, Andy from Forgotten World of Movies, and Nige the Rock God were talking about Jaws 2 on uh, stream, uh, live streams. And I've heard them mention it a few times now, and they seem to really like this movie. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to give it a go. And yeah, I quite enjoyed it. It's not as good as the first film. It's not even half as good, really. But it's still a fun shark movie. Where it sees, uh, oh God, why is my blanking on his name now? Roy Schneider's character, oh my God. <laughs> Chief Brody, how can I forget that? Oh my God. Uh, sees Chief Brody um, basically still on the same, I think he's still on the same sort of uh, seaside town, and the shark has come back. And there's a really great third act in this film where Chief Brody has to go and rescue these kids that are stranded with a shark, you know, sort of circling them and stuff. And it was really good. You know, I, I really enjoyed that third act of the movie. But over, overall, it's a good sequel. I, I didn't mind it. Um, 
it's just not as good as the first one, but that is a massive ask, isn't it? Now, I've got to say, this 4K guys looked absolutely unbelievable. Uh, couldn't believe how good it looked. One of the best 4Ks looking 4Ks I've seen. But yeah, Jaws 2 was a, a real fun time. So yeah, very happy to own that. I think I might grab Jaws 3 and 4 now at some point just to complete the collection, but I do want to check them out after being really surprised by this one. So that is Jaws 2. Next up, I watched Alien Romulus. Now, this was my most anticipated movie of the year, really. I was even more hyped for it after going through them Alien films. I was like, this is such a strong franchise. And yeah, I absolutely loved it. It didn't live up to expectations. It exceeded them. I've said a lot of bullshit about this movie, saying there's too much fan service and stuff. I don't care. You know, I, I, I'm an Alien fan. Save me. Yeah, I'm happy. Um, this basically sees these teenagers who are... They've noticed that there is a chance for them to escape this called a Wayland-run sort of planet that they're on and there's nothing for them there and they are basically slaves and they want to get out and go into a better life and just go to this new planet and stuff so they had to plan to escape and when they get to the space station where they need to pick up some fuel to go to this new planet and, be and stuff they encounter the xenomorphs there and the face huggers and stuff now this movie just done so many things right uh i love the character of andy in this film Played by David Johnson, thought he was absolutely fantastic. Shows some range in here. I'm not going to give too much away, but you'll know what I mean when you see the film. I thought Kaylee Spaney as Rain was a great protagonist. And they're the two main central characters in this movie. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about the other characters, but I thought they were fine. There was so much horror-focused um, moments in here with the face huggers. You know, they show up a hell of a lot more than the other movies here. I loved all the Xenomorph action. And the third act, man, is going to make or break this film for you. And I loved what they did. I absolutely loved it. It was just pure, total, Freddy Alvarez horror. And, yeah, it's it was just one of my favourite films I've seen in the cinema in years. Yeah, I don't really have too much negatives to say on this, apart from a CGI sort of looking face on a certain character. And there is one bit of fan service that did not work for me. I actually cringed and squirmed a little bit when I heard it. But overall, not too bad. I think on my horror channel, I give it like a 9 out of 10. So yeah, Alien Romulus was fantastic. And the next film I watched was Alien Romulus. Yes, I went to cinema to watch this again. Uh, I've never done that with a film before, but I went twice to see it. And... I did get a popcorn bucket, so I'll just show you that really quickly. I made up with that. Fantastic. Look at that. I've never bought one of these before, but yeah, I had to have that. That was so cool. So yeah, went to see it twice, guys. I'm definitely going to watch it again when it comes out on 4K. So that's how much I love this movie. So that is Alien Romulus once again. Next up, I watched the TV show, a documentary which involved where I live in Liverpool, and that was Merseyside Detectives, the, the Murders of Olivia and Ashley. I think that's what it, the full title was called. And this basically follows two shootings that happened in Liverpool a couple of years ago. And basically two people were killed who weren't the intended targets. The crimes weren't connected, but they happened, I think, within a day of each other or over a couple of days of each other. And the city was just kind of in shock, really. So this young girl was shot, a nine-year-old, by this guy called Tommy Cashman. And this other girl was killed by these four guys who orchestrated the murder, but they were after their boyfriend, really. And the, it just shows the police side of things, trying to catch these killers and stuff. But, man, this was so interesting. If I was an upcoming criminal now, I would watch this and go, yeah, just not worth it. The police just know everything. They know your every move. And it just was really interesting to see them work and hunt down these killers, basically. And actually shows the killers and stuff in jail, you know, as they get being, a, not jail, but, you know, getting arrested and stuff. And man, it was just, it was just weird to watch, you know, seeing these people get arrested and sort of bad mouth on the police and stuff like that. Um, but yeah, it, it was, I love detective police stuff. I've watched, um, 
24 hours in police custody so many times. I love all shit like this. But for it to be in Liverpool, my hometown, and just noticing you know, a lot of the area and stuff on the on the program, and you know, it, I used to live by not far away from where one of the shootings happened. In fact, both of the shootings really. Um, I used to live not far away from all that. You know, it's just a it, it's a scary world. It is, and uh, this shows how scary it can be, especially when it's so close to home. But man the police man they just know what they're doing now if you're into any sort of crime tv documentary type things i would 100 percent watch this it's on channel four i believe was it channel four i think it was channel four uh you, i think you can watch it on catch up it's a four-part series i watched the first episode very late on on the monday i think and then on the tuesday i watched the other three straight away just one after the other so it was just so addictive couldn't stop watching it and uh, I thought it was fabulous. So, yeah, definitely, definitely worth a watch if you like your true crime. So, that is Mersey's Had Detectives, the, the Killing of Ashley and Olivia. I think. I think that's what the full title is. So, yeah, definitely worth a watch. Next up, we have Oddity. Now, this is a film I'd heard a lot of buzz about because America got this as a cinema release. And I really wanted to watch it because lots of people were saying it was like their best horror movie of the year and stuff. And it finally came to digital. And I gave it a go. And I'll tell you what, man, this was a small scale movie that felt much larger. It felt like it should have got a cinema release, but it was only an indie flick, really. And it all takes place in like two locations. So it's just weird the way it felt so much bigger than it was. But this sees this woman who was murdered in this house and her sister, her twin sister, who's a bit of a medium, comes to the house herself and tries to investigate what happened and get to the bottom of it. And there's this like wooden man that she brings, like this wooden mannequin. And it's just sitting in the corner of the room for the entire film. And you're always wondering, what the hell is this thing going to do? Why is it there? <laughs> Why is she brought it to this house? I won't say too much more than that, but I thought the acting in this movie was fantastic. Everyone brought their A game. I think that's why it made it feel a lot bigger than it was as well. It just felt like they were all very professional actors. Uh, the scares in this movie really worked. There was a couple of times, man, I jumped out my skin. Uh, it actually is a scary movie at times. And it's just a very interesting horror flick. And I think you're best going into this not knowing as much. But definitely give it a go if you're a horror fan, guys. I, I thought it was really, really good and really interesting. Something a little bit different. That is Oddity. Next up, I watched Blink Twice, which is Zoe Kravitz's directional debut. And she obviously played Catwoman in the Batman movies, if you can't remember who she is, or the latest Batman film, I should say. And this is a film that sees these two female characters go to this, they meet this billionaire in Shining Tatum, and he makes friends with them and says, do you want to come to my island? And they say, yeah. So they just can't believe their luck. And they go to his island and they're treated the right royalty, and the whole place is like paradise. But something doesn't really add up and as the movie goes on they start to think mm, something's not quite right here what is really going on in the background not everything is what it seems and it is a mystery movie the whole film is built on intrigue and it all is put on its third act really and i thought the third act was satisfactory i just didn't really think it had that good of a payoff compared to what i thought it could have been uh, there was a lot of a lot of little decoy, uh, little nuggets and thrown in here and there to make you guess what what this was, what that was. And I didn't see it. I didn't, I didn't guess what it was all about. But it was still a little bit flat when it got there. And I think Zoe Kravitz was trying to have some social commentary here. I'm not sure quite landed. It's like social commentary we've seen a hundred times over. But it wasn't bad. You know, I I like the performance from the main protagonist i'm really sorry I, I forgot her name i'm really sorry uh shining tatum in this i don't think he blows it out the water or anything i think this is a real big chance for him to show that he's got a bit of range and stuff i just think he's a competent actor i don't think he's anything phenomenal or anything people may disagree with that and that is fine i just don't see the big thing about shining tatum but he was okay in the movie. Great cast in there. Great to see Christian Slater having a bit of fun. I haven't seen him in a movie for a while. Uh, the guy off Sixth Sense, 
Yeah, mine's gone blank again. The kid off here, uh, Six Sense. I know you're all shouting at the screen his name. Hilly Joel Osman. He's in there. You know, it's, it's a good little cast in there, I think. And it's not bad. It's not bad. But I didn't love it or anything. It's just a very average film. So that is linked twice. Next up, we have Batman the Cape Crusader on Amazon Prime, another TV series. This is a 10 parter, and this was directed by Bruce Tim, who I believe did the Batman animated series from years ago. And it's done in that same vein, you know, with all the gangsters that got the, the hats on and stuff like that. Uh, same sort of animation, really. But each episode, it was like an anthology, but little bits did carry on. But each episode sort of was its own story, apart from the last two, which are connective. And I thought this was great. You know, I really had a good time with it. Some episodes obviously are stronger than the others. That's what you're going to get, especially when it's different stories going on. But there was an episode about uh, a guy going around killing movie stars and stuff. And I was like, oh, it's like a whole detective thing. Batman brought his detective side to it. Well, that was great. And there's another one at a carnival, which is really interesting, where this character is going around sucking the life out of kids, kind of like Doctor Sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was just a really good show, really good voice work, you know, some really interesting episodes. They're only on for like 25 minutes. You know, I, I just love going to this world of Gotham and seeing this animated style of it. So, yeah, I definitely recommend it if you're a Batman fan. It was a lot of fun. So that is Batman, the Caped Crusader. Next up, we have Milk and Cereal. And I did a lot of buzz about this because the guy who made it was trying to get distribution rights, I believe. But in the end, he just put it on YouTube for free. And this is only an hour long, this movie. So I thought, you know what? Why not? It's not going to take too much time up. I think I was tired one night. So I thought, this one will do. Heard a lot of buzz about it for the horror community. And I was glued to it. I really had a good time with this. This is a found footage film about a couple of pranksters who've got this YouTube channel. And... They play pranks on each other for videos, basically. And one of the pranks goes a little bit too far and bad things start to happen and it all just spirals out of control. But there are some also, also some little twists and turns along the way. Now, they made this movie for $800, which is just crazy to me. I watched Chris Stuckman's review on this. He put it up just today. And I believe they are... It costs that much because they have to pay one person in this movie who is a professional actor. All the others have just basically done it through uh, their own free will to get their movie made. And I thought this was a really chilling, chilling found footage film. Now, I am a fan of found footage. I'm, I'm surprised that so many people who say they hate found footage because I really love it. It's one of my favorite horror subgenres. And it's definitely worked for me. So the best thing about it is it's free. Your best going in not knowing too much and just give it a go. It's on YouTube. Just type in milk and cereal and it's worth a watch. And now along, can't go wrong. So that is milk and cereal. Last up, guys, we do have I Saw the TV Glow. <sighs> when A24 gets a little bit too pretentious, that is now. Look, a lot of people are going to love this movie. And it's going to be your type of film. For me, it just wasn't. This sees this young boy go and team, uh, befriend this girl who's a little bit older than him. And they watch this show. I forgot the name of the show. The Pink something. And <laughs> they really get into it. They bond over it and they become friends because of this show. And they're watching it together every Saturday night and stuff. And then it just goes a little bit weird. Like, in the final 40 minutes, all weird shit's happening and all art housey stuff. And I know there's a message in there somewhere. I didn't quite get it. This movie just was not for me, guys, unfortunately. I did like the first hour. I did. I thought it was good. You know, the chemistry between these two characters where they're sort of sneaking to each other's houses and I think it might have been in the 90s which is my era of growing up, and sort of becoming friends over this show. And it was good to see the little snippets of the show that they were watching and stuff, but it just didn't work for me in that final 40 minutes, guys. That's all I can say. So that is I Saw the TV Go. Okay, guys, hope you all enjoyed this video. What do you think of these movies? Please do let me know in the comments down below. And if you want more of this, please subscribe and give the video a, a like. Thanks so much, guys. You take care. And I'll see you all on the next video.